previously on Blue Healers. What is that? Oh, for God's sake. Do you think the stick was inserted before or after she died? Either way, this is one sick puppy. Sure she wasn't getting it somewhere else, Steve? No. And you were jealous? She wasn't yeah. seeing anyone else. We loved each other. Stick this time, it's a, it's a crucifix. I'm asking for a second chance. I've been there before, never again. Tell us where you were the last two nights. Um, I usually work nights, I didn't the last two. So, can anyone confirm that you were home? Wife, girlfriend, boyfriend? McCready is an Acula. Garth just called, they found another body. Stab wounds, body's been laid out. Cross. All except one thing. It's a male. His name's Leon Barclay. He was a school teacher at Mount Thomas High. He's only been here a few weeks. So we're back where we start. Three nights and three murders, each between 8 and 10 p.m. And each with a crucifix. Yes, thank you. Same demo. Only this time the victim's male. Any link between him and the other two victims? Hopefully this call will tell me. Hi, thanks for getting back to me. We've got a problem. Really? This time the crucifix found in the victim was tied with yeah. twine. Yeah, the others were improvised. Thank Whatever you. the killer could find at the scene. He came prepared. He's refining his technique getting more confident. So, how many more crucifixes he got lined up ready at home? Boss, that link you're after, both Leon Barclay and the second victim made identical credit card payments every Thursday for the last six weeks. Two? Uh, something called the Lapscott Clinic. It's the Lapscott. That's right. You're a doctor, sir? A psychologist. Marinda May and Leon Barclay, are they clients of yours? Yes. Do they know each other? Marinda's dead. Has something happened to Leon? We just need to know what you're treating them for. Well, I can't tell you that. Is Leon all right? Look, their credit card records show that they both made payments to you on the same day. I run group therapy sessions. That's as much as I can tell you. This is a small town. You're a tiny psychologist. You probably run heaps of groups. People with alcohol problems, drug addiction. I mean, you wouldn't be betraying anyone's confidence if you told us what group you run on Thursday afternoons. I run a sexual abuse support group. We need those names. I'm sorry, I can't help you. This person's killed every night for three nights. Now, in your profession, you'd know what that means, right? A psychosexual predator whose pattern of nightly killings is likely to continue. Uh, Senior Detective Henderson, uh, Principal of Mount Thomas High on line one. If this predator is working his way through your therapy group, the other members need to be warned. And I'll talk to them. Not good enough. We need to know how the killer got to these people. And we need to check alibis. The killer may well be a group member. No way. No, I, I know these people. It's just not possible. Boss? TV News on line four. Thanks. Somewhere in this town is victim number four. Who could very well be a member of your group. Whoever it is, they may not have very long to live. I intend to make sure they get fair warning. So unless you give us the names of the members of your group, I'm going to speak to this reporter and tell him everything we know. This isn't my favourite idea in the world. Well, how do I look? A little more housewife, a little less detective. Is that better? Beautiful. Hey, Leon Barclay taught geography and science at Mount Thomas High. I arrived a month ago with good references. Problems at school? Seemed competent. Soft around the edges. What, he was gay? Yeah. Where are you going? Amy's going to join a support group as a new member. What? Well, I suppose this is your idea what you use sex abuse and that's it. Anything else is off the table. Actually, uh, <laughs> the idea was mine. Look, the first victim wasn't a member of this group. 
We should be following other leads. Well, right now, there are no other leads. We've got to go. The group's all here, but I still want to clear it with them, okay? Isn't it up to you? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it'll be okay. Oh, I suggest you don't say much. New members tend to be fairly quiet. Don't worry, I'll keep my mouth shut. Good. So I'll pick you a mile up if you lie to them. I won't be long. This week's meeting forward, I assume some of you would have heard the bad news. Is it true Liam was killed last night? And was it the same person who killed Marinda? The police assume that might be the case. Oh my God. They've asked me to assure you all that they're doing everything they can to find the killer. Three people are dead. They're obviously not doing very bloody much, are they? Prior, I thought that was you. How's Stephen? Well, how do you reckon? His girlfriend's just been murdered. That school teacher last night, same killer. We're following all leads. Yeah, that's what I keep telling Stephen. How long have you been working here? About a week. Council called me. Seen anyone odd hanging about? Well, it's a park. Odd people always hanging about. Look at over there by that building. That's full of odd people. My abuser died in a car accident years ago. But I still dream he's chasing me. It's always the same dream. I'm in some dark alley. And it's not. I just know he's there, waiting for me. I don't understand. He always abused me at home. While Mum was sleeping. But I'm always dreaming of alleyways. Thanks, Nari. How are you going with those uh, relaxation techniques? I try it. I just lose my concentration. You keep trying. It might just help. Does anyone else want to speak? What about Amy? What's she got to say for herself? Carol, you know no one should be forced to speak. Marinda and Leon are dead. And now she comes waltzing in? We know nothing about her. She could be the killer. So you've been keeping an eye on the place? No, not really. Sometimes you just can't help noticing things. Has Lap's got a suspect? No. Oh, I'm uh, just here supporting a friend who's trying to give up smoking. She wants to be careful. You see, the brain is like an old engine. It just hangs in there until you start mucking around with a screwdriver and then it all falls apart. Stephen's mother wants him to see a shrink to cope with losing Janelle. Mr. Pryor, last night. Oh, no, you can cross me right off your list. And the other members of the church fundraising committee. So you were at a meeting? Yes, it was supposed to end at 8.30. But Mary Watson stuffed up the Sunday plate takings as usual. Took five of us until 11 o'clock at night to sort it out. I had to ask. Hmm. Well, you're only doing your job. Oh, and, uh, your friend, uh, who wants to give up smoking, tell her to be careful. I don't have nightmares like Nairi. You shouldn't be forced to speak. It's okay. Well, sometimes when I'm walking down the street or if I'm working back late, I get this... 
this weird feeling, uh, like I've been there before or someone's watching me. Everyone feels that. It's called deja vu. It's not deja vu. Because it's, it's exactly the same feeling I used to have with my uncle. It's just that feeling of helplessness. You know, when I used to feel him watching me and know that that night he'd come and visit my bedroom. It just hits me out of the blue and I, for the next half hour I, I can't concentrate. I, it's like I'm not really in my own body. It's almost like the organisational part of my brain just becomes disconnected from the rest and... <laughs> you know, that's, that's almost funny because normally I'm the most organised person on the planet. I'm not afraid or upset, I'm just, just distracted. Sorry, you, you think it'd be more dramatic. Thanks, Amy. for sharing. It's hard the first time, but you're very brave to have made the first move. So did that help? Not really, but at least I got a bit of an insight into uh, the type of people that he's targeting. No, I meant that that help you uh, personally, being in the group. Well, you weren't play acting. What? Is that the first time you've told anyone what happened to you? <laughs> God, I must be a better actor than I thought. I, I made it up. I'll see you later, thanks. Bill Lapscott's right. I don't think anyone in the group could have done it. Well, women can kill as well as anyone else. Sure, but none of these women are very big. I doubt that they'd have the physical strength to do it. Well, doesn't rule out Lapscott himself. Well, it doesn't feel right to me. So, a waste of time? I need to know what's happening. It's been days and no one's telling me anything. Yeah, no, look, I understand, sir. Um, PJ, Amy, remember Mr. Watts? Yeah, of course, yes. Janelle's father. Yeah. I just want to know what's going on. Mr. Watts, is there anyone that you can talk to about this? Like a relative or a friend? No one understands. How could they? Well, we're doing everything we can to... Well, you're not doing a very bloody good job, are you? I mean, it's not only Janelle that's been killed. How many more are there now? Well, we're following some really strong leads. Oh, have you got any suspects? No. Have you got anyone locked up? No. Well, you've had some time to think in the last few days. <laughs> Too much bloody time. Yeah, think about my little girl. What happened to her? Mr Watts, do you have any idea who might have done this? Never liked that boyfriend of hers. Stephen Pryor. He's always been a bit weird. He, you know, he, he leaves his girlfriend and goes home with a headache. What sort of bloke does that? Stephen Pryor is alibi for Janelle Watts' murder. Then why does Jeff Watts suspect him? Because he's out of his head with grief. He's looking for someone to blame. The man's a mess. All right, late shifts on deck. Right, uh, you and Susie on surveillance at the Rotunda. That's where we found the latest victim. Oh. Hey, Foxy, there's a really handsome guy looking for you at reception. Name's Bill Lapscott. If someone is really targeting members of the group, it's quite possible they were assaulted as a child. I wrote down a few elements you tend to find in sexual assault victims. Oh, this could be really useful, thanks. I just don't want to see anyone else killed, so I hope that helps in some way. I'm sure it will. I could be of more help if I had some specific details. Stuff associated with the crime scene? I assume you have information you didn't release to the media. You know I can't tell you that. Yeah, I just thought I'd give it a shot. <laughs> so now you're wondering about me. Yeah, well, it doesn't help that you don't have an alibi for any of the nights. Well, do you? 
8 to 11 p.m. on a school night. Home alone with takeaway. Mm. Finish up with clients, write up notes, sometimes don't leave until 10. Having interviews in the mess room now, huh? I could uh, give us both an alibi for tonight. Would you like to have a drink? Are you asking me out? I suppose I am. I'd love to. Any sign? Not so far. Does it make you feel weird? What? Serial killers. Yeah. Seems to be a guy thing. So I should take responsibility for all men. Oh, what about you? Single mothers who shoplift, or women who stab their husbands. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it makes me feel dirty. Like it rubs off. For some reason, no one seems to want to come out for a drink. Can't imagine why. There you go. Thanks. So, this killer, any ideas? Average to below average intelligence. Aren't they supposed to be geniuses? No, nah, it's a myth. Generally speaking, they're not very bright at all. You're just good at doing one thing. Killing? Well, if that's all you're interested in, chances are you'll be proficient at what you do. Matt Thomas 900 to Matt Thomas 716. Can I have a cigarette? All quiet on the Western Front, Sarge. Right, Matt Thomas 900 to Matt Thomas 208. It's Kelly and Joss. Mount Thomas 900 to Mount Thomas 208. Come in 208. Oh, look, they're probably fighting over who gets a mic. Bet you Kelly wins. I bet you you're right. We're here, Sarge. Nothing going on downtown. Mount Thomas 900 to Mount Thomas 706. It's all clear at the rotunda. All patrols to stay on until 2400 hours. Mount Thomas 900 out. <sighs> Should go home, mate. Hmm. Guess I'm waiting for the phone to ring. Hope you're wasting your time. Me too. Dinner? Uh, no, thanks. So I've come home. What are you doing back anyway? Oh, I figured I'd swing past. No point going to bed if. Yeah. You heard from Amy? Isn't she having dinner with Bill Lapscott? Let's just hope he's not having her for dessert. You know I can't give you any details that haven't already been released to the media. I know, but I can guess, can't I? Okay, I'd be looking really carefully at the crime scene. There's so much you can tell about the killer's personality by the way he's left the victim. Yeah. Well, how he organised it, choice of weapon, positioning of the body. Look, we've both read the textbooks. I'd be going back and looking for anything unusual left at the crime scene. Like? Something symbolic. It may be even a religious symbol, a statue, a, a crucifix. Ah. I didn't say anything. Well, no, you didn't have to. Look, most religions have tricky relationships with sex. And so do most serial killers. I can't believe this. What? This is the first date I've been on in a year, and we're talking about... About a sex crime, yeah. We should get out more. Five to twelve. Mount Thomas 900, go ahead, 706. It's all clear at the Rotunda, Sarge. There's no one around. How much longer do you want us out here? Time to pull up the stump, 706. Oh. I might head off as well. Yep. For now. Leon Barclay's only been in town four weeks. I mean, if our killer is targeting victims of abuse, how could he have possibly found that out? Survivors of sexual abuse can be like a beacon to each other, a code only they recognise. It's like when you told your story today. The women in the group recognised as being true. Except it wasn't. If you don't want to go there, that's fine. <laughs> There's nowhere to go. I made it up. Oh, what? Right. You had me go. Oh, I don't know about you two, but I wouldn't mind being in there by sunrise. Sure, Chris. People pretending to be victims of abuse always go for the dramatic. The reality of trauma is how it affects the little things. Your description of being disembodied, distracted. It convinced the group. It 
convince me. I'm just lucky, I guess. I guess so. We should go. Detective. Hey. After you. Well, I don't think we can assume that he's a transient. The lab's got's profile suggests it's a local, someone who's had time to target specific subjects. Amy. bad enough that you date a possible suspect. What? But giving him details of the case? I didn't tell him anything. Then how'd you come to have this cosy little chat about the killer? Look, I was talking to Bill about his therapy group. At no point did I give him any information about any of the cases. Oh, come how on. How do you get off even asking me this stuff? You know, I have dinner with someone and all of a sudden you think I'm going to spill my guts about the case? Have you even checked where he was on the nights of the murders? Yes, I have. He's not alibied. Exactly. What is this about? You're acting like you're jealous. I'm not jealous. Amy, uh, got a job. I'm Rob. Thank God. Thanks for coming so fast. So what can you tell us, Mrs. Murphy? Well, Georgia was at the till. She can tell you. Oh, how much did they take? Over $2,000. We didn't get to the bank yesterday. Georgia, are you up to telling us what happened? They were big. It happened so fast. Was anyone with you? Any customers? I was out the back. If only I'd been there. It's OK. I'm sure Georgia did everything right. Except for handing over the money. I'm so sorry, Mum. Don't blame Georgia, yourself. Georgia, we need as many details as you can give us. Do you think you can do that for us? I can try. Do you remember what these men were wearing? The first one had black tracksuit pants and an orange T-shirt. Really bright. Black balaclava, but I could see his eyes. They were very blue. And he had a small scar across his right hand. The second group wore a blue bomber jacket with dark brown eyes, almost black, and he had a mole above his left eyebrow. What's the door doorknob? Yes, yeah, start with the shops on either side of the bakery and just talk to anyone in the street. This thing's really detailed. She hasn't missed a thing. Well, she's like a mum, not easily flustered. Amy, PJ, I think I got something. Too so happy about. Bill Lapscott's listed for a domestic violence incident. I phoned the detectives involved, got them to fetch the details. Lapscott went around to his ex-wife's house at three in the morning, bashed the door down and belted her. She was in hospital for six weeks. Well, there must be some explanation. I mean, an incident like that, he'd be struck off. He's got a history of violence, right? He's got no alibi for any of the three nights. The only night that there hasn't been a murder is the one he's having dinner with you. There's no link between Bill and the first victim. Janelle wasn't a member of the therapy group and has never been associated with Lapscott. Lapscott saw Janelle Watts every single day. How? He lives at 27 Mary Street. Mary Street. Janelle lived in Mary Street. And he lives right across the road. Looks like your favourite shrink's now prime suspect number one. You want to know about Bill Lapscott? He lives across the road from your house, right? Yeah. How well did Janelle know him? She didn't. He lives across the road. What, you, you're telling me she never spoke to him? She probably knew him like I know him. You know, sort of bloke that you nod to. Or we'll talk about the garbage collection with. You know, it's not as if we're best mates or anything like that. Besides, you know. Besides what? Well, he's a shrink. Strange. Strange? How? Yeah. Well, all shrinks are strange. You have to be to meddle in that sort of stuff. What stuff? Sex stuff. Y you know. Yeah. So. It is possible that your daughter was familiar with Bill Lapscott. She never mentioned it to me. Did you know everything that was going on in your daughter's life, Jeff? I love my daughter. And I know she loved me. After my wife left it, it was just the two of us. There, there was nothing that we didn't share. 
until her boyfriend came along, Stephen Pryor. And it wasn't just the two of you anymore, was it? What's the first rule of homicide? Look to the family first. True. But Jeff Watts? Second, this is a sexual crime. I mean, you saw him when we asked him about the boyfriend. So you're saying Jeff Watts had an incestuous relationship with Janelle and what? Resented Stephen Pryor moving in on his territory. Well, you can't rule it out. But if he resented the boyfriend moving in, wouldn't he just knock off the boyfriend? Oh, it's simpler. What about the other victims? What was Jeff Watts having a relationship with Marinda May? With Leon Barclay? Well, they were also victims of sexual abuse. That's our link. If no, Jeff not all Watts men was are having sexual, a sexual I'm not saying that if, they are. Bullshit. You've spent your whole life obsessed. I'm just saying. Let's have some evidence, hey? Look, maybe Jeff Watts was an abusive father. Maybe he's just a man who's out of his mind because his daughter was murdered. Fine. I'll find the evidence. Perky faces, spring in your step. Armed robbers duly apprehended. No one saw anything. Don't knocked every shop on Penhope Road. Right. There was even a street stall down the road. You'd think someone would have seen two armed robbers, one in a bright orange T-shirt, jumping into a getaway car. No, it was CWA. So? They're old, they're not blind. I mean, it's not as if we don't know who we're looking for. We've got scars, moles, hair colour, eye colour. This is the best description I've ever seen. Yeah, maybe it's too good. Most armed hold-up victims are so freaked out that all they see is the gun. But George has got these guys down to their like, blue-on-white high-cut joggers. Where's high-cut joggers these days? Funnily enough, Joss, that wasn't the point Kelly was making. Mrs Murphy, does your daughter have a boyfriend? No. Does she have any friend you might describe as a bad influence? No. Has she ever been in trouble with drugs? Why are you asking me these questions? Mrs Murphy, George is the only person that saw the robbery this morning. Just wondering if perhaps George may have organised the robbery herself. <sighs> no, no. She knows how hard I work. There's no way she'd steal the money. Did she need anything? No, and I resent that you're even implying... Has she asked you for any large sums of money recently? You can't find two armed robbers, so you want to pretend they don't exist. Well, you're not blaming my daughter for Mrs. it. Mrs Murphy. I just wanted to say hello to Amy. Thought she might appreciate a call. And why's that, Nari? Nari, did you know Janelle Watts? Yes. Through the clinic? No. Now, how did you know her? At high school. When did you last see her? Four years ago. I just called by and I talked to... What do you know about Bill Lapscott? He's a lovely man. Gentle. Trustworthy. Rare qualities. But you'd expect that from someone who used to be a priest. Well, leaving the priesthood doesn't make Bill a serial killer. Maybe he just decided that celibacy wasn't for him. What, did he tell you that? What, he just left the whole priesthood bit out of his CV altogether, okay, did he? OK, OK. What did you find out about Jeff Watts? Well, Janelle's friends at work said she was thinking of moving in with Stephen. Her father refused permission. So? Well, they'd been fighting about it for a month. Jeff Watts never mentioned any of this. Lap Scott's got a lot more against him oh, than for Jeff God's Watts. Oh, for sake, will you give me one shred of evidence against Priest, Bill Lapscott? Priest, religion, sex, crucifix at every crime scene. Do I have to draw oh, a will picture? You give it a rest for... OK, we need to find out what sort of priest Lap Scott actually was. As for Jeff Watts... The fact that he didn't like the boyfriend doesn't mean he went out and killed his own daughter. That's I'm not, not saying I... it's not possible, but we need more. We need the boyfriend's point of view. I'll go talk to him. OK, I'll, I'll go and talk to the church. Hey! Your dad said you'd be here. What are you planning? Some tulips for Janelle. Now, I want to look out here and see the flowers and remember her the way she was. Not think about what must have happened, what it must have been like. She's dead because I went home with a migraine. 
I'm really sorry, Stephen. Thank you. You and Janelle were planning to move in together, weren't you? She wanted to, but her father said no. Why was that? Well, I don't think Jeff liked me very much. Yeah, I mean, they were pretty tight, you know. Daddy's little girl. When I came on the scene, he thought he'd lost her. Now we both have. Great. Everything all right? Yeah, I'm just asking your son a few questions, Mr. Pryor. You found that killer yet? Well, you'll be the first to know. Hey, Amy. Hi. Um, I need to talk to you about something. I'm sure, you want to come inside? I know, it won't take long. Um, used to be a priest. I used to be a priest. A serial killer with a crucifix. That's my connection to the victims. And you never mentioned that you live across the road from Janelle Watts? Janelle? She's not from across the road. Brown hair long? That's Janelle Watts? Yeah. I read her name in the paper, but I'd never made the connection. My God, she was like the first one, yeah? So now you know all the victims. And now you're wondering about me. You know what? I think we should do this officially. Yeah. I went to this Catholic school. And the priests there, they were fantastic blokes. They were smart, they were good at sport. I just wanted to be like them, so straight out of high school, I, I joined. And what went wrong? Oh, nothing went wrong. It's just, I was too young, 18. Started meeting girls and it was all over. And uh, your ex-wife? Jill was bipolar. One night soon after we split up, she rang and she'd taken all these pills and blamed me. So I went over and I had to break the door down to get to her. She was throwing herself out of a window. The police turned up. Uh, they thought it was a domestic. I can't blame them. They didn't charge you? An independent psychiatrist assessed her. He committed her and... You can check this if you like with the police. Psychiatrist, my ex-wife. I really enjoyed our night at the pub. You should do it again. You asked me out again. No. The day you find this guy, we should have a dinner. Sure. It's a date. You spoke to Lapscott. Right. Alone? Yes. And if he's a serial killer, I'll eat the whiteboard. Did he tell you about the priesthood? He's not a defrocked priest. He's just a guy who worked out early that the priesthood wasn't for him. Well, what about the violence with his wife? Garth, if you search hard enough, you can find damage in anyone's life. No, we'll send a car around. Even yours. Kelly, Joss, the uh, brown owl is calling. 2,000 hard-earned dollars! Mrs. Murphy, stand back, please. She's under arrest for armed robbery. What the hell? She attacked me! Well, maybe your daughter's around. Maybe your daughter can ID him. I don't want my daughter involved. She asked for the photos and she paid for them. Photos? What the hell is going on? Who is this guy? Blaine O'Connor, talent scout, Sydney School of Modelling. And I want this woman charged with assault. Why did that guy take these photos? Why don't you ask him? Sure. As soon as he's finished at the hospital, he deserves everything he gets. So how do you know this Blaine O'Connor? I don't. I never met him before today. Well, he obviously knows Georgia. He's exploiting a minor. He said she paid for the photos. With my money. So Georgia did steal the money? No, she didn't steal it. Mrs Murphy, your daughter actually... Georgia's no thief. That bastard probably threatened her or something. $1,500 for this? She's not really model material, is she? <sighs> model. She looks like a dog. Joss! Well, what? She does. Look at that. Hey, we don't need the canine comparisons. Everyone has their attributes, our defects. We checked at Mount Thomas High. O'Connor's promised at least ten other girls that they're going to be the next big thing. Yeah, only for 1500 bucks. Right. How much did Georgia steal? 2000 Right. Sydney School of Modelling. Is there such a thing? Oh, it's Blaine O'Connor's private company. There's no actual premises in Sydney anywhere. 
roughly some tall things a scam. Uh-huh. Pretty profitable too. At least ten kids have already coughed up the cash. Bloody hell. Fifteen grand. In less than a week. So what, what did you do with this bloke? Still at the hospital. Bring him in. Look, I want that woman charged with assault. If this scar... Ask me, you got off pretty lightly. Are you condoning her attack? You can understand why she's upset. Oh, I can't, actually. I mean, I've done nothing illegal. What do you call these? I'm a photographer. I'm not shooting porn. I mean, if a nice girl wants to take some nice photos, then I'm not going to stand in her way. She's got great teeth. Well, you promise these girls if they join your Sydney School of Modelling... 1500 bucks. ...they'll be catwalk models in Paris in less than a month. I'm not promising anything, but it could happen. Oh, come on, Mr O'Connor. Look at her, she looks like a disease. Look, you can think what you like, but Georgia has a dream. She's Georgia Murphy, the country girl from a one-horse town who rises from obscurity to become the face of international modelling. I'm not going to let you take that dream away from her. She never even had this dream until you filled her head with all this crap. I've done nothing wrong. Incitement to steal is a crime. Well, it's no business of mine where she gets the money from. So, you usually charge these girls 1500 bucks? Yeah, you pay for quality. Georgia stole 2000 well, I charged her extra. The deluxe set. You know what? You've got to credit the guy. He knows what he's doing. What he's doing is criminal. He's making these girls believe something that's never going to happen. Not in a million years. You know, Kelly, it's not criminal. It is immoral. Subtle difference. The irony here is the only crime that's been committed is by Georgia. But she's the victim. Yeah, up until she stole $2,000 and filed a false report. Bring her in, eh? Georgia, we know Blaine told you a lot of lies about modelling. He wasn't lying. We know you paid Blaine $2,000 for the photos and we know you took them from the bakery. I was going to pay it back. $2,000 is a lot of money. Not compared to what I'll be making. Blaine says I'll be swimming in money. I'll be making $2,000 an hour. Georgia. And there'll be stretch limos and champagne and nightclubs? Georgia, there are eight supermodels in the world. What are your chances of becoming number nine? Especially when he's promised the same thing to ten other girls in Mount Thomas alone. I could be the one. Nah, Georgia. Why not? I could be the next big thing. Tell her what you said when you saw the photos. <laughs> what are you talking about? Tell her. Kelly? Tell her. I cannot believe you made me out to be the bad guy. I'm one of the mum as well. I'll take it from here. Here you go, sweetheart. These are all for you, all right? Every single one. Georgia, you've been officially cautioned. Do you know what that means? That means a sergeant could have charged you. You could have ended up with a criminal record. Me as well. No point in anything now. Why not concentrate on the things you're good at? Your mum says you're great at science and maths. So you're obviously a smart girl. You had us chasing two non-existent armed robbers. Yeah. <laughs> well, it means you've got a wicked imagination. Why not use your brains to make your fame and fortune, eh? I can be an actress. A famous actress. Janelle, what's Marinda May, Leon Barclay? All died between... 8 and 11 p.m. There's got to be something that connects these three. There is. What'd you do? Stalking with the camera? Australian Psychologist Association website. Jeff Watts has no connection to Marinda May or Leon Barclay. Can we forget about the suspects for the moment and just concentrate on the victims? Who, Janelle? Let's concentrate on Marinda. Okay, she died just after Janelle. It's got to be something we're missing. Oh, well, you got the information report on Marinda? Yeah. I'll get a copy. seem distracted. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I... I am. Look, um... I'll see you in a sec. Yeah. Amy. Hi. Everything okay? 
everything okay? Um, not really, no. Uh, that dinner that we were supposed to have, I can't do that. You don't trust me? No, it's... Then what is it? Because psychologists can't date their patients, can they? Your uncle? Yeah, um, I've been distracted all day and uh, it's probably just a result of sitting around that group. If I'd have known, I would never have let you do that. It's not your fault. No, it's not your fault either. You do understand that, don't you? Yeah. Theoretically. <laughs> So, um, I was thinking maybe a few one-on-one -on -one sessions wouldn't go astray. Um, how's Monday? Yep. If I uh, call you with the time. Okay, thanks. My name again. I'm really sorry about the dinner. <laughs> but, good on you. Okay, now just because we had one night without a victim doesn't mean we can rest easy, right? Tonight we're going to be targeting a specific area, okay? I'll have Alex and Evan outside the Lapscott Clinic with Susie. I'll be on a radio out the back. Um, PJ, I'll have you in a park opposite the clinic. Hang on, are we specifically targeting the Lapscott? Do you have a problem with that? Well, yeah. We're going to look pretty stupid if we've got eight coppers watching one target while Jeff Watts is on the other side of town carving someone up. Yeah, but hang on. Lapscott has no alibis and he has a connection with all three victims. I agree with Senior Detective Fox. Split up the teams. We don't need everybody watching Lapscott. Right, then. Need someone to go with you. She can take PJ and Susie. Yeah, good idea, boss. We're going to catch Lapscott tonight. And you'll be on the other side of town. We've got Watson view. It's all quiet here. Aim, can you still see him? He's just switched off the light. The suspect's on the move. Susie, go ahead. He's just turned on the telly. We're missing something here. I just wish you could see it. Yeah, well, maybe if Garth wasn't so obsessed with Bill Lapscott. What is going on between you two? Me and Bill. Between you and Garth? Nothing. We're just two professionals with a professional difference of opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. So, you got him? Still watching the TV. What's he watching? Scott's still at his desk. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like it. He's keen. Hey, yeah. want a coffee? <laughs> Shut up. I'm serious. Give me some of that. He's not there. Call Garth. I'm probably just going for a slip. Now make the call. He needs to know. Mount Thomas 2082 to Crime 470. Crime 470. Target may be on the move. What do you mean, maybe? We've lost sight of him. Lost him? How can he still get under the nose of three coppers? How long since you sighted the suspect? Maybe a minute. <sighs> it could be anywhere. Two zero two receiving. Is everything okay? Behind clinic. Need assistance. Attempted murder. Victim still alive. 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 Vict
Hang in there. Come on. Hey, you with me? So. Hey, hey, God. Mount Thomas 202, this is Mount Thomas 509. What is it? Who's hurt? Oh my God. The victim was Snari Douglas. She's now deceased. Travelling 470. So where's Bill? 